back at WNST and Baltimore Positive. We are positively back here where we're in a construction zone. We're down here at Lexington Market. <laughs> it's a lot happening down Man, here. And we're going to have some Fadley's Crab Cakes before it's all over with. I, uh, I do promise you that. Uh, Don Moeller, we're, we're at Fadley's, and we have a former mayor here who is the final sort of contestant that we've had a on the program. Former mayor who former wants mayor. to be mayor again, as hard as the job is. So, mayor, former is Mayor Sheila Dixon, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Th thanks for joining us. We thank all of our sponsors at Fadley's State Fair, our friends at Center Maryland. If you haven't checked out the, the best news aggregate site in the state, check out Center Maryland and our newest sponsor, Jeff Moeller and Moeller and Gary Realtors. Give Jeff a call. Buying and selling this spring, 410-746-1547. Well, Mayor, you want to be mayor again. And... I think back, we're going to talk about all the issues, but certainly when you made the decision to run, you knew that going back to 2009, you were going to have to talk to voters about what happened in 2009, what you learned from that experience, and what you would say to voters, some of whom were disappointed, some who were angry, some would say, we can't be doing this in Baltimore City. So I guess there are a couple of questions there. When you look back, did 2009 give you a pause about running again this time, knowing that you'd have to address it all again? Um, yeah, definitely gave me pause. It gave me pause because I did not want to put my family through any agony because of what we had gone through before. I know that um, I disappointed the citizens of Baltimore as well as so many people that believed in me and saw that I was doing a great job. Um, you know, I look back at that, you know, I made some bad choices. I know that um, past that time, you know, I know I've tried to give back to the community and do everything in my power to um, let people know that, um, that one, I'm sorry, that I learned from my mistakes and that I know that it's going to take people um, three times, I'm going to have to work three times harder than anyone else to gain people's trust back. You know, I try to be as transparent as I am. I try to, and I will make sure that we have a transparent government. Um, and I know that um, it's going to take some time for some people to um, believe that I'm the best candidate and that I'm the best person that can get this city back in the kind of order that we need it to be so we can move it on and I can pass that baton to a young person that understands that when you create systems like we did for our crime fighting efforts where we reduce crime more than any any mayor um, in the last 30 years where we were cleaning up this city we were greening up this city and we were also getting the city to be healthier and part of what I've also learned is that when you have knowledge and information, sometimes, and, and you know, and it took a lot for me even to decide, even when I, you know, ran in um, the last um, election, um, that w you need a manager, you need a person with vision, you need a person who can bring people together to really work cohesively. And that's just not happening. When, when you, when, when we advertise that folks are coming on the show, obviously our our listeners reach out to us and say, ask this, ask this. One of the things that I heard when folks knew you were coming on, and again, if you're listening, we're with former Mayor Sheila Dixon, wants to be mayor again. When, when folks heard you were coming on, they said, we've heard the mayor apologize. We've heard, we've, we've heard Mayor Dixon apologize, say she's sorry, say she let people down. But they say, in addition to the apology, ask the mayor what she specifically is going to do in terms of government and actions to make things different, to ensure that the kinds of things that happened in 2009 that led to her court appearance won't happen again. What actions can a mayor take to make sure that doesn't happen again? Well, first of all, and, and I actually made corrections even when I was mayor, is that you have to disclose everything. And I did do that. I, you know, part of why I'm out of public office is because I didn't disclose some things, you know, a relationship. But part of it is you have to disclose everything. If somebody gives you a gift, if it's a pen, if it's a pencil, if it's a piece of paper, a crab whatever cake it today. is, if it's a crab cake, you disclose it. 
And no matter what it is, no matter how small, no matter how large, you disclose it. And that information is now documented online with, where the citizens can actually go online and read your disclosure. And this, when I had to file, you have to file your disclosure. I put every bit of information that I know that not only was important to disclose, but even things that I didn't have to put on there to explode to disclose as relates to you know what I do in business now you know what I'm doing in the nonprofit community and and what I do as in my church everything what are you doing in business in the community I, uh, one thing for me is you sort of disappeared and then you came back four years ago and then you sort of come back again I live at the harbor I've seen you around town a handful of times over 20 years of my life I've always thought of you as being sort of a school teacher first from the beginning, right? Yeah, I was. That's how I knew Don. Don was my guidance counselor in 1982, right, right. which is why we're doing Baltimore Positive 40 years later. Uh, what, what is your primary business over the last 10 years that leads you back to this place where you want to lead the city? Well, um, I have always been active and involved, so I haven't never really disappeared. I, I'm working with, um, I'm a consultant for contractors particularly African-American, minority, Hispanic contractors. I help them to expand their business, identify opportunities outside of the city of Baltimore and in the city of Baltimore, in Baltimore County, in Prince George's County. Um, I um, help companies to um, grow their business, to find technical assistance, to find financing for their companies in order for them to grow their companies, um, um, conduct workshops, I do marketing for this association because it's about bringing in members and helping them. Um, I also work with a nonprofit entity where we changed it from an outreach where we were doing direct services to now um, we are, it, it's called the Bethel Wellness and Empowerment, where we are looking at organizations that can help to empower the community. And so we actually have a capital campaign going on. We've had it for the last five years where we've been raising money to get the building renovated. Um, so we've been meeting with foundations. Um, I'm also very active in my church. I'm a stewardess in my church, um, as well as a trustee in my church now under this new um, pastor that we have. Um, I'm very active in um, um, a couple boards that, that I was serving on, as well as just helping young people out. I have a couple of young people that I mentor. Um, we now. talk a lot about thread around here as well, and yeah. you know the kind of organizations that mentoring young people. Yes, yes. Well, I have a couple of young people that I have mentored, um, some from my church and some um, that I've met from some of my companies, and some of them were in high school and now they're in college, and I'm still mentoring them, supporting them financially, you know, helping them out with making sure that they're focused on what they need to do. As part of your, the core business, what you, do, you talk to people about investing and starting businesses. I live in Baltimore. I think that that's one of the, aside from crime, ethics, education, those things, how do we attract business here? When, when someone comes to you and says, I want to start a business, and you said inside and outside of Baltimore, that's everyone, right? They can build in Baltimore County when Don was running, or Anne Arundel County, Howard County, inside Maryland. I know Larry Hogan's working on that. But attracting money, banks, new development cranes, and there's a crane right next door here. If you pulled up at Lexington, I love seeing cranes in the skyline. Right, right. Well, that we have a lot of cranes in this city. We have a lot of construction going on, and I actually work with contractors who are contractors, minority in particular, companies who want to expand and grow their business. A lot of them are subcontractors where they do business in government, and they want to get into the private sector. So it's really about connecting them to work with uh, majority contractors who do all the schools and other projects and showing these companies what they need to do to expand their businesses also with how we can begin to train individuals but the other part too is in order to invest businesses in this city you know we have to look at some of the fees and taxes that we charge well, how we make it attractive yes. right i mean i i think that that's that that's for every restaurant the, that wants to yes. open any business that wants to open here how can we make it as attractive as possible right um it, because there are other options. You can take your money, and the right. bank can take their money, but and the they risk elsewhere. Right. right, but the other thing is people want to be able to know that they're going to be safe in the city. Sure. And that their employees are going to be safe. And so we have to do a better job in making that happen. Now, the weather's getting ready to break. We didn't get a winner, which I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> I wanted a couple snows. But 
now it's getting warmer. You know, I was meeting with some business people the other day um, on one of those warm days, and they said that they had um, dirt bike guys ride up and down. Well, that's been Lombard going on Street. during your administration, well, all but, the administrations. But it that's was happened. going on, but in certain areas, like on Sundays in my during my time, they were on Rice's Town Road, going um, by the park. Okay. Um, and it wasn't what, what, as it so, wasn't so, as magnified as it is today. So solve that challenge for me. Well, so tell well, me, tell I'm me gonna tell you what, what we began to do okay. back in the time when I was mayor. We connected with a company who had an export import company, who was we were confiscating the bikes, and then we were shipping them overseas to Haiti and places where they use that for transportation, and it was beginning to cut down. So we were actually people were letting us know that a bike was in this particular yard because, you know, in the city, they're illegal. I was going to ask you, that's, again, we're with former Mayor Sheila Dixon, uh, wants to be mayor again. We remind everybody. I'm digging this. Con- this we, is hardcore. I, this, is, we, this is what it, it I'm is. I'm a citizen. Hard, right. These are the problems I've had the last 10 years that have really pissed me well, off. Well, so and it's it, led me to do Baltimore <laughs> Positive, to talk about how are we going to fix this? And this see, is, and how are we going to fix this? And you said for the last 10 years, but, he, but let me say this. We were under um, my administration, Fred Bilfell, um, Anthony Boxdale, and so many other committed individuals in the police department. We were working cohesively to address that. We didn't have the challenge with the squeegee kids during that time. We had an issue with panhandlers, and we were beginning to focus and deal with that. We had community action people going out finding out what their needs were. Because a lot of times, some of the panhandlers is either mental health, uh, drug addiction, or homelessness. You know, we had a 10-year homeless plan. So all of these things were in, in, in the process of happening, being structured, beginning to work. But we have an issue here in Baltimore as it relates to politics where when something is working, instead of you building on it, we want to, oh, that was her idea. I'm going to throw that away. I'm not going to do that. Versus, hey, sh- he or she has something to this. It's like when Martin created City Stat. You know, I was skeptical of it because people would come and be really stressful about it. But it was a great tool to assess what was going on in our agencies, where the strengths were, where the weaknesses as were. As long as the input's honest. And, and that, that's and the that, issue. We had Martin here a month ago, and there are lies, damn lies, and statistics, right? But, and when we're baking statistics... You know, we got a government down in 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue doing that right now. Well, and, well, and one of the things that we stress to all of our managers and employees and directors, don't hide anything. Right. Let us know what it is so we can fix it together. We need your ideas as well as our ideas. I used to walk through the agencies. I used to have a uh, weekly or monthly um, brown bag lunch where any employee could come in and talk to me. And know that they could talk to me and confident so that if they were afraid because of being, um, you know, um, harassed by their supervisors, I needed to know that. I needed to know if you had an idea to help us uh, to resolve the problems in the city, I want to hear from you. We need to have that open communication. I kept my ears to the ground. I didn't micromanage. I also had good deputy mayors that knew what the ultimate plan was for all of our agencies and what we wanted to see happen. Now, mind you, this was under during a recession where we didn't have a whole lot of money. You know, orange comb that we established with resurfacing streets where we had contractors doing it and city people doing it. We, I wanted to maximize every penny we had. We were able to reduce the overtime in the police department by monitoring and making sure that it wasn't being wasteful. And we were able to put some of that money and increase what we put into our schools, which is really a challenge. Well, we need to put more money into our schools. And then we were focus on preventive measures. You know, it's... We want to put a Band-Aid on something instead of getting to the root of it and really deal with some of the sy- systemic things. I grew up here in Baltimore. I'm a West Baltimore girl. Well, you guys so have We're going to gonna talk. That's uh, next segment. We're going to talk about next segment, right? <laughs> yeah, but that's Southwest. That, actually, that's a new right. community we're gonna, for me. We're going to talk about your background, but you just, I, I, as I'm standing here, I, I saw Nestor perk up because you touched on issues that drive him insane. And you you really cut to the They've to the driven chase. me to found Baltimore Positive, you, literally. You, <laughs> and you cut to the chase. And I don't want to – I don't want to gloss over them. So I want to back up and really take a deep look at one at a time. I want to go back to the dirt bikes because I hear all the time, you hear all the time about the dirt bikes. And they are intimidating. And they and – they, 
they Thank you. Sure. they make people feel unsafe. Now you said without hesitation, and we sort of just went right by it, Mayor. You said we were getting rid of those dirt bikes. So I got a couple of questions. Again, I want to revisit. Can a mayor, through leadership, is it legal for the mayor to say, we're not going to have these dirt bikes riding all over this city? So is it legal for a mayor to do that? Yes, it is legal. Okay. Because they're illegal in the city. Now, there's talk about creating a dirt bike park or a dirt bike area. But if you talk to those young individuals riding a dirt bike, they don't want to park. But one thing that we could potentially, but it is illegal in the city. I have called it urban terrorism. It was one of the first things 15 years ago that I lived down at the Inner Harbor, and every Sunday they go rolling through. And then 10 years ago, 5 years ago, and I said to myself, this is terrorizing the tourists in the city. Like crossing the streets, 80 miles an hour down Light Street. And I thought to myself, this, how can this be... We have helicopters. We have police. How? And this was one of my first forays into this is a this is a quality of life issue. It is a. Quality and now of I life have issue. a condo at the Inner Harbor that I, I can't get anybody to walk through. Uh, it's been on the market for twenty months. As a stakeholder and a, a taxpayer, I can't I can't give my home away because of issues like that. A lot of other well, issues. I said maybe you're charging too much. No, well, <laughs> yeah, obviously. Uh, maybe I've, they charge I've me said, too much I've to said, begin with. I've right, said that, that right? to him once or yeah. twice. You know. <laughs> yeah, maybe they charge me too much in the beginning, too. Maybe I was promised something, you know. Um, but, but for me, the, 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 I've had the same homeless man. I, I call him homeless. I'm not sure. Panhandler homeless. On the corner for 17 years. He was there this morning. Every morning for 17 years, there's been the same man at the same red light panhandling. For 17 years, it's... That goes back to Martin, right? I mean, it goes through four mayors, five mayors now, whatever. I, I, I don't feel any movement on that. Right, you well, know, on that issue. I agree, and I understand that, but we did have some movement. We were working with the Downtown Partnership. We were working with the advocate groups who said that they have a right to be out there. Well, I understand they might have the right to be out there, but we have to look at what that does to people that have to go by this every day, people that, and obviously that individual needs some kind of Counseling support. Counseling support, sure. And, and so what it is, that's why we created this initiative where we had, through the health department, through our homeless program, we had advocates going out. I don't know if you know about um, Martin Luther King, where this gentleman used to live right there in the median strip. He had his tennis shoes lined up and his bed and everything. And this is the first thing everybody in Baltimore sees first on the way thing to everybody work. saw. Yep. And night after night, we had somebody who wasn't part of the homeless program working with them who went out there night after night, talking to him, finding information about what kind of um, resources he had or did not have. And finally, we were able to get him into an apartment. And it might even take that kind of time because he obviously had some mental issues. And so, but providing those wraparound services. Now, we have some folks that are out there on Sunday, there's a regular group, a young lady in her wheelchair and another guy. In some ways, it's a hustle. <laughs> it is. Oh, it is. It's, it, it's it, drug addiction. Some people know, okay, Sunday morning, I get to church people going to church. Some of them want to be out baseball there. Baseball games. It, 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 when people come to town. I went yeah. to the Hippodrome last night, um, and, and I, I was almost shocked at the ease of it for me, you know, that, that it, they're – it was a completely wonderful experience to go to the Hippodrome and see a, see a show, see Wicked. I didn't like Wicked, by the way. we <laughs> talk about that later. We have former Mayor Sheila Dixon. And we, we got uh, three full segments. We got, we, so, much, we got so much to so get much to. Up, we're gonna, it's, uh, the, the mayor just touched on, on drug abuse, um, getting real specific. We're, gonna get, we're actually going to get into the weeds and talk about running city government when we come back. Because one of the things, you certainly have had the criticism of, of past behavior, but one of the things that I hear over and over, and we're going to come back and talk about it, is even when people, if they'll, if they'll lead with that, and they'll say, well, you know, I'm disappointed, like you said, your friends were disappointed that what happened in 2009, but they always come back and say, but you know what else? Sheila knew how to run the city. And we want to talk about what that means, that she knew how to run the city, because that comes up all the time. Nestor, where are we? We're down at Fadley's with Lexington Market, former Mayor Sheila Dixon here. She's running for mayor again. We're talking to all the mayoral candidates. Make sure you're holding April 14th on your calendar. We're going to have a very special gathering uh, of people who uh, have the courage to uh, want to lead and step up and lead Baltimore. I'm Nestor. He's Don. We're back for more. Segment two ahead with former Mayor Sheila Dixon. We're at Fadley's in Lexington Market. We are WNST.net AM 1570 and Baltimore Positive. Back for more right after this.